adventure clearly is dealing with uncertainty. You know, an adventure is a, a journey with an uncertain outcome. The people who go to Mount Everest go to Mount Everest to seek out the uncertainties and the challenges of that unknown world recognizing that there are no guarantees, recognizing that in challenging yourself against difficulty and uncertainty, you can discover something new about yourself. John Amat, one step beyond. Risk, challenge, change. Leading expeditions to remote regions for more than 35 years. Exploring some of the most extreme landscapes on the planet. John Amat part of the first team to climb Europe's steepest mountain face, the 5,000-foot Troll Wall. Leader of the first Canadian expedition to reach the summit of Mount Everest, going one step beyond, taking the risks that lead to change. It's only when we are forced to struggle by some kind of external event, perhaps over which we have no control, or when we choose to struggle by Challenging the status quo and setting difficult goals for ourselves is only then that we discover what we're really capable of achieving. I am, for example, the man I am today because at a very early age growing up in England, I was very shy, very insecure. I lived in a very protected world. My father was a senior bank executive, a very conservative profession. My mother was a full-time homemaker, always there when I needed help. And it wasn't necessary for me as a kid to take any risks with my life, and as a result, I had no confidence. And I can still remember a, a family holiday. I think I may have been eight years of age. We were driving around in the car. We had become lost. And my dad asked me to get out of the car to go to speak to a stranger, to ask that man for directions back to our hotel. And I was so intimidated about the idea of speaking to one stranger that I refused to even get out of the car. I now make my living speaking to strangers. I've created a strength out of what had been a limitation by acknowledging that weakness and by challenging it and myself against increasing difficulty on mountains all over the world. Because when you confront fear, it recedes in front of you. When you run away from fear, it only grows in your mind. In fact, I've come to believe that fear and anxiety is really just nature's way of focusing our attention on the task at hand. And if that's true, and we're not feeling a little bit anxious, clearly we're not paying attention to what's going around us. Clearly we're clinging to the status quo of the past and not seeking out those new opportunities of the future. Laurie took pictures of everything around in the panorama, the landmarks, the mountains, his Sherpa companions. And then, of course, he decided it was time to get a picture of himself on the summit. And it was at that point that he realized he'd run out of film. <laughs> he started to hunt around in his backpack to find that little two-ounce canister of spare film that he always carried. And he realized in the urgency to get going that morning, he'd forgotten to bring any spare film. He never did get a picture of himself after all that effort. There is a small consolation, though, if you look carefully in the sunglasses of the man on the right-hand side. <laughs> but you know, pictures aren't important because you don't learn anything from looking at a picture. Standing on the summit isn't even that important because you don't learn anything standing on the summit. The important thing, of course, after an achievement like this is to step back, digest the experience, learn the lessons, and then you can gaze out towards those new plateaus of endeavor out there which are only now possible because of that new learning that has just taken place. I should tell you, incidentally, that I did not personally stand on the top of Everest on this expedition. I was one of the leaders of the team. It wasn't my job to stand on the summit. My job was to make sure somebody did. Because in our definition of team success, when one person climbed that mountain, the entire team had achieved the goal. And it didn't matter who it was as long as one member of our team reached the top of this mountain. John Amat, one step beyond. His formidable Everest expedition was televised live throughout Canada and on ABC's Nightline. John Amat, founder of One Step Beyond Worldwide, an innovative education and motivation company, author of Straight to the Top and Beyond, in which he uses the metaphor of his own adventures to develop an approach for scaling the heights of today's unpredictable global environment. When you set a goal for yourself, 
such as this Mount Everest or any other Everest goal in life, it's vital that we bring to that task a clear understanding of our strengths as individuals and teams, but equally essential that we acknowledge our limitations. Everybody in this room is different to some degree because we have different strengths, different limitations. We choose our goals accordingly. We build on the strengths, we improve upon the limitations. We knew that we had the climbing ability to climb to the top of the world. We'd climbed Mount McKinley in Alaska, the highest mountain in North America, but that's only 20,000 feet high. Mount Everest is two miles higher than that. So while we recognize this strength, we also acknowledged a very significant limitation, and that was our inability to perform effectively in the rarefied airs of the mountain, as effectively, that is, as the native Sherpa people do who live around the base of Everest at elevations of up to 15,000 feet above the sea. We knew that we would have to integrate the Sherpas of Nepal into our team so that their strengths would offset our limitations, so that our strengths coupled with their strengths together would make it possible for us as a team to go all the way to the summit. Aldous Huxley, the writer, also said experience is not what happens to you. He said experience is what you do with what happens to you. Whether you take that experience, whether you reflect upon it, whether you digest it, whether you learn the lessons, and then whether you apply that newfound learning to an even more difficult challenge in life, which is only now possible because that new learning that has just taken place. And it was that experience on that mountainside in Norway at the age of 20 that for me opened up in a, a crack in a door of possibility that many years later was to take me to Mount Everest as a leader of the first Canadian team ever to try and climb this mountain. John Amat, the world's best adventure speaker, International Celebrity Management of Australia. More than 1,500 keynote speeches to over 750,000 people in 35 countries, encouraging audiences to push beyond, way beyond self-imposed limitations to embrace personal accountability and effective teamwork. The key to it all, F8, and be there. Pat Morrow is a professional adventure photographer. He's one of the finest outdoor photographers in the world today, and he wanted to take the pictures from the top of the world. But on the summit, it was minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 72 degrees of frost, so cold that the battery couldn't charge his electronic camera. He couldn't get an accurate reading of the light to expose the film correctly. So what he had to do was manually operate the camera, to take off his mitts and manually operate that camera. Now, as many of you will know, on a professional single-lens reflex camera, there's a ring of settings called F-stops, aperture settings as they're known. They go all the way from F1.4 all the way around to about F32. In any one situation, only one of those settings can be absolutely correct to expose the film correctly to the light in that situation. So what Pat Morrow had to do was to take multiple pictures of the same view, each one with a slightly different setting of that exposure meter. By bracketing all the exposures, knowing he'd get one, and only one perfect picture. And it was that focus, that concentration, that discipline in the sub-zero temperatures that brought back some of the best pictures ever taken from the top of the world. Many people have asked him since how he takes these pictures, and he has a very simple answer. He says, F8 and B there is how you take great <laughs> photographs. F8 the camera to expose the film correctly to the light and then be there in the right place to click the shutter. It's that simple. But you know, if there's only one thing you take away from this presentation, I hope it'll be that phrase. Because to me, metaphorically speaking, F8 and be there is going to be the key to success in the changing times to come. Because just as Pat Morrow has to F8 his camera to expose the film correctly to the light, so do we have to F8 our minds. We've got to expose our minds correctly to the world in which we live, but then we've got to be there in that world of today. Because the way we did things in the past aren't working necessarily anymore because the world has changed and we must change with it. It's the spirit of adventure that drives progress. It's the spirit of adventure applied to everyday life 
challenging the status quo, using our innovativeness to create new things. It's that adventure that enables us to adapt to the environment and move ahead to any kind of future that we face. And as you climb this mountain, I hope you can think of it as an adventure. But most importantly, just keep on climbing. Thank you. Good luck. John Inlet, One Step Beyond. Risk, challenge, change. For more information on John Amat and how to go one step beyond, contact the provider of this video.